Uncle Drama here. The story begins with Gina, a student who faces many challenges at school. Because she is a dedicated student and gets good grades, she becomes a target for some girls who mistreat her. Just imagine Gina, such a hardworking girl, being bullied simply for excelling in her studies. She pours all her sadness into her diary, using it as a place to vent the frustrations she can't share with anyone else. One day after school, as Gina boards a bus, she accidentally drops her diary on the ground. A boy named John, who is nearby, notices it and tries to return the diary, but the bus leaves before he can. Curious, he opens a diary and as he flips through it, discovers where Gina lives. What will he do with this information? Will he return the diary or use it differently? Meanwhile, Gina continues to suffer from bullying at school, becoming more and more sad and withdrawn each day. One day, she crosses paths with Robin, a new boy in town with a mysterious air that immediately catches her attention. His eyes, Gina is captivated by them, but Robin, being the rebel that he is, doesn't say a word. Why is he so distant? What is he hiding? Robin is a new student at school, and on his very first day, the principal warns him. He can't dress like that, and earrings are prohibited. Instead of obeying, Robin gives the principal a defiant look that makes him back down and allow him to keep wearing the earring. What kind of power does Robin have? He introduces himself to Gina's class, and all the girls are awestruck by his looks. But Gina? She thinks he's just another egotistical guy, and isn't at all pleased that he sits behind her where he can watch her. One of the boys tries to start a conversation with Robin, but he remains mysterious, which Gina finds extremely rude. To make matters worse, Gina forgets her gym clothes at home and is forced to participate in PE wearing a skirt. Of course, the other girls don't miss the chance to laugh at her. Robin, on the other hand, watches her intensely, even licking his lips. Did he like what he saw? Is this a sign of something more? Robin soon shows his talent when he's invited to play basketball with the school team. What no one expected is that he's a professional player, leaving everyone astonished and the other players looking ridiculous. But what about Gina? How does she feel seeing Robin's talent and confidence? Meanwhile, Minzy, the rich and cruel girl at school, continues to torment Gina. During PE, she hits Gina with a ball, causing her to fall and get hurt. Robin, tired of seeing Gina suffer, intervenes and hits Minzy on the head. Minzy, furious, is about to retaliate. But when she realizes it was Robin, she swallows her anger. After all, she likes Robin. But why? What makes Robin so irresistible? Even to someone as cruel as Minzy, Gina, still in pain, tries to go about her day, but Robin, feeling responsible, offers her a bandage. Gina, of course, is touched by the gesture and feels her heart beat faster. Does he really care about her? She thanks him. But as soon as she sees Minzy and her friends, she runs away, afraid of another ambush. Will she ever find peace? Later, Gina finds her backpack thrown in the trash. Who would do something so cruel? She receives a call from a friend asking her to come to the bathroom, but when she gets there, she realizes she's fallen into a trap set by Minzy. The girls start beating Gina, pouring beer on her face and locking her alone in the bathroom. Gina screams for help, but no one comes. She feels the cold taking over her body, and just when she's about to faint, someone mysterious appears and helps her. Who is this person? And why did they decide to help Gina? When Gina returns home, she finds John, who is now her new neighbor. He is excited, but Gina can't hide her sadness due to the constant bullying. Suddenly, she receives a message from an app called Revenge Game, which promises revenge against anyone whose name she writes. Will Gina take this opportunity? One night, Gina hears a strange noise and scared, starts hitting a blanket that's moving, thinking it's a thief. Her mother, hearing the commotion, runs to help and also starts hitting. But to their surprise, the thief is Robin, who is also their neighbor. Gina's mother, embarrassed, asks her to take care of Robin, who got hurt in the confusion. Will this bring them closer? Gina tries to help Robin by putting a cold egg on his face, but everything goes wrong, and she realizes she's not cut out to take care of others. Robin returns to his house, where we discover that he is John's brother and that they live alone. John mentions that their mother called, but Robin doesn't want to talk about it, making it clear that there's tension between them. The next day at school, Minzy continues to humiliate Gina, and Gina, exhausted, decides to write Minzy's name in the revenge game. What happens next is surprising. Minzy, while with her friends, gets a bucket of water thrown in her face, ruining her new clothes. And to make matters worse, a video of her bullying Gina leaks, followed by another where she tries to bribe someone to cheat on a test. Minzy's reputation is destroyed, and her mother punishes her severely. Gina receives a message, 
saying that her revenge is complete. But who is behind this app? Could it be Robin? Gina begins to suspect Robin when she sees him with a phone in his hands. What is he doing? Could he be involved? The next day, Gina accidentally bumps into a rich girl on the bus, who gets furious and vows revenge. Gina tries to escape, but the girl calls her poor and says she will make her life a living hell. How will Gina handle this new problem? When Gina returns home, she finds John and the two share a moment of connection. Is John falling for Gina? And what does she feel for him? Later, her mother forces her to clean the building, but John, always kind, offers to help. Robin, however, continues to tease her, laughing at the way she's dressed. Is he just joking, or is there something more behind these provocations? Gina discovers that Robin works as a waiter in a restaurant to save money and become independent. John, who has a terrible fear of insects, screams like crazy when he sees one, and Gina laughs at him. Despite all this tension, is Gina starting to see John in a different light? Later, Gina tells John that she's being harassed by messages, and he helps her block the number. Gina discovers that John is a programmer and begins to suspect that he might be behind the revenge game. Could her suspicions be correct? Robin arrives late to class and the teacher kicks him out, making Gina sad because she knows he works late and doesn't get enough sleep, which affects his performance at school. Later, Gina sees John holding a girl's hand, which makes her uncomfortable. Is she jealous? Does she really like John? Meanwhile, Gina notices smoke coming from a cabin and, worried, throws water and calls the principal. But when they open the door, they discover that the rich girl was smoking. The teacher punishes her, but this only makes her want to take more revenge on Gina. And now, what can Gina do to protect herself? The rich girl's friends don't give up and chase Gina, who hides in the boy's bathroom, where she finds Robin. He thinks Gina is a pervert, but she explains that she's being chased. Instead of turning her in, Robin protects Gina, telling the girls that no one is there. But the girls, undeterred, continue to chase her, forcing Gina to lock herself in the library. What will she do now? The group leader offers a thousand dollars to anyone who finds Gina, leaving her terrified. With no other options, Gina decides to jump out the window but ends up landing on John. Will he be able to protect her? They look at each other with love, but the girls are still after Gina, and she needs to hide. They find shelter in a bush, but John hurts a rib. How would he deal with this pain while his feelings for Gina grow? In the end, Robin and Gina develop a special relationship, facing so many challenges together that they grow closer and closer. However, this relationship begins to cause even more tension between Robin and John, who is also in love with Gina. The competition between the brothers only intensifies, with both trying to win Gina's heart in different ways. The friendship between Gina and Robin strengthens when she invites him for a meal, trying to apologize for calling him stubborn earlier. During dinner, Robin finally opens up and reveals to Gina that he used to live with his grandmother, but she passed away, leaving him with deep sorrow. This confession touches Gina's heart, and she realizes that behind his tough exterior, Robin is someone who carries a lot of pain. Despite this, Robin continues to be mistreated by his schoolmates, who accuse him of being a thief after the money incident. The situation worsens when he is kicked off the basketball team, something that devastates him. Gina, noticing Robin's suffering, decides to investigate on her own, and that's when she makes a shocking discovery. The real thief is a girl who had taken the money earlier, and Gina has the proof, the bloodstained bills she still kept. Determined to clear Robin's name, Gina asks John to hack the girl's Instagram, and together they discover that she used the stolen money to buy luxury bags. Gina then writes the girl's name in the revenge game. The next day, the police show up at school and the girl, terrified, tries to hide. But she is discovered by Robin, who confronts her, feeling cornered. The girl starts crying and begs for forgiveness, but Robin, furious, doesn't let her off easily. With the teacher's help, Robin finally proves his innocence. Grateful for everything Gina has done for him, Robin begins to realize that his feelings for her are deeper than he had imagined. He gives her a small gummy candy as a shy gesture of affection, something simple but full of meaning. Gina, in turn, feels her heart race. Is she also falling for Robin? During a school trip, the situation between Gina, Robin, and John becomes even more complicated. John continues trying to win Gina over, 
always being gentle and attentive, while Robin, despite his cold behavior, shows signs that he deeply cares for her. The three end up at an amusement park and Gina, who is afraid of roller coasters, feels nervous about having to ride one. Robin, noticing her fear, holds her hand, giving her a sense of security. This simple gesture makes Gina's heart race. Is she finally realizing who really makes her feel safe? At the park, an interesting scene unfolds. A local TV show host mistakes Gina and John for a couple and puts them on stage. They are forced to pretend to be boyfriend and girlfriend and share a chocolate bar, bringing their faces so close that their lips almost touch. But something feels off. Where is Robin? And why does her mind keep going back to him? Robin, watching from a distance, feels a pang of jealousy and steps away. But when Gina drops her wallet, he is the first to rush to help her, once again proving that, despite everything, he is always there when she needs him. This doesn't go unnoticed by Gina, who starts to realize how important Robin is to her. However, Gina's younger sister, who also likes Robin, can't handle the jealousy and posts photos comparing her beauty to Gina's online. To her surprise, everyone agrees that Gina is prettier. Insecure and hurt, Gina's sister decides to seek a plastic surgeon to change her face. But the doctor is a scammer and promises to make her the most beautiful woman in the world just to steal her money. Gina discovers the plan and, together with John, rushes to save her sister. John, always the protector, explains to Gina's sister that she is beautiful just the way she is, without needing any surgery. Gina then writes the surgeon's name in the revenge game. The next day, the doctor, while trying to perform a procedure, ends up bald and has to live that way, ruining her career. Back at school, Gina starts noticing that Robin is acting strangely. He becomes more and more distant, and Minzy's provocations only make things worse. Minzy, realizing that Robin is vulnerable, approaches him, trying to win him over. Robin, however, can't hide his frustration and sadness. What's really going on with him? In a desperate attempt to keep Robin by her side, Minzy pretends to be seriously injured after an accident. She manipulates the situation so that Robin feels guilty and treats her like a princess, while Gina watches everything, feeling a growing pain in her heart. Is Robin falling into Minzy's trap? And Gina? How will she handle the situation? John, noticing Gina's suffering, tries to cheer her up, but nothing seems to work. The tension grows when Minzy starts spreading lies, saying that Gina is bullying her. This causes the other girls at school to distance themselves from Gina, making her life even more difficult. But Gina, tired of Minzy's lies and manipulations, writes her name in the revenge game. Suddenly, the school's fire alarm goes off, and in the ensuing chaos, Gina is knocked to the ground. Robin, always vigilant, runs to protect her, holding her tightly while the other students panic. They take refuge together, and Robin notices that Minzy, who was supposed to be using crutches, ran normally during the alarm, revealing that her injury was fake. This deeply hurts Robin, who feels betrayed by Minzy. As Robin and Gina look at each other, they realize they are still holding hands. What does this mean? Is Robin finally ready to admit his true feelings? Gina's friends laugh at the redness on her face. She is finally realizing who really makes her happy. Later, Gina meets with John, who, sad, asks if he still has a chance with her. Gina, heartbroken, returns the necklace he gave her and says that, unfortunately, she only sees him as a friend. John, though hurt, accepts Gina's decision, showing the maturity he has always had. To try to ease the pain, Gina decides to go bowling with Robin. Robin, as always, is skilled, while Gina struggles to hit even one pin. Seeing her difficulty, Robin moves closer and starts guiding her, gently touching her arms and hands, which makes Gina melt. Every touch from Robin makes her heart race, and she can't help but get lost in his eyes. Realizing the effect he has on Gina, Robin decides to give her a special gift a necklace identical to the one she had lost long ago. Gina, surprised, 
discovers that Robin spent weeks searching for a similar necklace in various stores. He puts the necklace on Gina with all the care in the world, and the two grow even closer. When Gina returns home, she finds that her mother is back from her trip. Though she is happy to see her, Robin greets her coldly. Robin's mother reveals that she wants them to move to the United States. However, Robin refuses, stating that he has found love where he is. This creates new tension between him and John, who tries to convince Robin to obey their mother. Robin, furious, tells John that he shouldn't pretend to be his brother because he knows that in reality, they are not from the same family. John, hurt and confused, slaps Robin, an action witnessed by Gina. Shocked, she asks Robin what he meant by that. Robin then confesses that he discovered years ago that he was adopted and that the pain of losing his biological parents has accompanied him ever since. Moved by his confession, Gina comforts him, saying that he doesn't need to carry this burden alone. She hugs him, and Robin feels that, for the first time, he can truly trust someone. Later, Gina accidentally meets Robin's mother and they talk. Robin's mother says that, despite the difficulties, she is proud of who he has become. Robin overhears the conversation and, emotional, apologizes for all the arguments. He promises to try harder to be a better son, and for the first time, he feels his mother's true love. Feeling renewed, Robin meets with Gina and remembers the first time he saw her. He admits that he initially thought he shouldn't get involved with her, fearing that he would break her heart. But now, he is willing to face any pain as long as he can be by her side. He whispers in her ear that he loves her, and Gina, surprised, asks him to repeat it. Robin then shouts, with all his heart, that he likes her more than his own life. Finally, Gina admits that she loves him too, and they hold hands, radiant with happiness. However, their joy is interrupted by the news that Robin will have to move to the United States with his mother in three days. Gina is devastated, but Robin promises that the three days they have left will be the most wonderful of their lives. Together, they make a list of things they want to do before Robin leaves. They go on several dates, but fate intervenes when... During a meal at school, everyone except Robin falls ill from contaminated fish. Chaos ensues at the school, with students rushing to the bathroom, turning the day into a complete disaster. Later, while helping her mother organize things, Gina accidentally bumps into the girl who pretended to be injured and knocks her phone down. When she picks it up, Gina discovers that the girl was also using the Revenge Game app. When the girl tries to write Gina's name in the app, a message appears saying that Gina did nothing wrong and that the revenge cannot be applied. Frustrated, the girl throws the phone into the water, rendering the app useless. Next, the school principal expels a teacher who had helped Robin, falsely accusing her of selling tests. Gina and Robin, certain of the teacher's innocence, decide to investigate on their own. They sneak into the principal's office at night and discover a hidden camera that reveals the whole truth. The principal had fired the teacher to hire a friend of his who didn't care about the student's education, only about profit. They publish the video online, and the whole school learns the true nature of the principal. The students, outraged, prevent the principal from escaping until the police arrive and arrest him. In the last days before Robin's departure, Gina and he live an intense romance enjoying every moment. Gina gives Robin a shirt identical to one he has, and although he initially doesn't like it, she explains that it's a tradition for couples. Robin, wanting to please Gina, agrees to wear the shirt because whatever makes her happy makes him happy too. Meanwhile, Gina's mother, who is spying on her ex-husband, sees him with another woman and thinks he doesn't love her anymore. But in reality, he was planning a surprise. He appears with flowers and declares his love for her, proposing marriage. She, emotional, accepts the proposal. Gina organizes a farewell party for Robin, and John, realizing that he no longer has a chance with Gina, bids her farewell as a true friend. Robin, emotional, receives a photo album as a gift that captures all the happy moments they shared. He smiles, feeling that, for the first time in a long time, 
His happiness is genuine and deep, thanks to Gina. Before leaving, Robin receives from Gina a necklace identical to hers, so he will always remember her. She tells him that if any American girl tries to kiss him, he should show the necklace and explain that he already has a girlfriend. Robin smiles and promises that he will never forget Gina, who is the love of his life. Robin leaves for the United States and Gina, though sad, finds comfort in the memories of the moments they shared. Robin, in turn, feels a void leaving Gina behind, but he keeps the promise he made to her. Even when other girls approach him, Robin shows a necklace and makes it clear that his heart belongs to Gina. Their love is so strong that, even from a distance, they continue to think of each other. Robin knows that one day he will return to Gina and that they will live in eternal love because his favorite place in the world is by her side. When people ask Robin what he is thinking about, his answer is always the same. He is thinking about Gina, Gina's lips, Gina's eyes, and the life he wants to live with Gina, the love of his universe. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this.